Uh, it's my birthday today, so this is the best birthday present I could have. So thank you very much. And apart from peace in Ukraine and peace for our climate crisis, I'm here to talk about the largest asset class opportunity in the world. It's called sovereign carbon. But first, a little bit about myself. I've been a climate activist since I was 14, 25 years earlier than Greta. And this is the reason why. I'm a half Ukrainian, half Cambodian, but I've lived all my life in Switzerland. And I've had a passion for glaciers since I was a kid. This is a picture taken of the glacier up in Montfort in Verbier. The little piece that you see of the white bo uh, board is actually all that's left of the glacier at the moment. A few years ago, even 10 years ago, we were able to ski there during the summer. So that's one of the reasons why I'm here. In 2003, I tried to force companies to measure their carbon emissions. And so I'm happy that 20 years later, this has become a regulatory requirement as part of the FCA in the UK, or as part of the SEC in the US, it's coming next year, or any other large markets, financial markets. In 2010, I created the World Climate Summit because there wasn't enough finance addressing our climate crisis. The, the World Climate Summit is still going, so I'm very proud of this baby. So it was uh, the 12th edition uh, in Sharm el-Sheikh at COP27, and at COP28, it will become even bigger and bigger in Dubai, and I hope you will all be there. In 2017, I wrote the world's first carbon methodology for livestock emissions. This is now a multi-billion dollar market. Last year, the Rainforest Coalition called me, and they were like, listen, we're doing all this work, and nobody knows about it, and nobody is buying any of our stuff. By, what, by stuff, I mean an RRU. It's a results-based payment that you can buy through the United Nations. And here, on the left, you can see the deforestation rate that would have happened in Papua New Guinea. And on the right, you can see the MRV results over the last five years. The deforestation rate has gone down by 50%, by more than 50%. So this is uh, the IPCC graph, the most important one that you should know. The most important part is what is under the brown part. It's called AFLU. It's a horrible acronym. All you need to know is that it's just nature. And if you don't protect nature, if you don't protect this 50 gigatons of nature over the next 30 years, there is zero chance of us meeting the Paris Agreement target. And this is what I want to, to, to explain. There's three words that I haven't really heard at this conference. One is compliance. The future is about compliance. It's not about voluntary. If you're doing a voluntary project to address our, exist our biggest existential crisis, you're doing the wrong thing. Compliance is very simple. It's called the Paris Agreement. It was signed in 2015 by 196 countries. And guess what? If you haven't read it, I invite you to read it because it sets the framework for the future of the carbon markets. This is what we did last year. We spent 12 months to try to figure out, doing the due diligence with several institutional investors to understand what, how you can fit sovereign carbon into the Paris Agreement. I'm not going to go into the details here. The most important part that you should understand is that sovereign carbon is Paris Agreement compliant. It's the only asset class at the moment that is Paris Agreement compliant. Nothing to do with the, par with the voluntary markets. The second word is scale. In the blue, light blue corner, you have the regulated market, mostly ETS. In the orange corner, you have the VCM, the voluntary carbon market. Now tell me, how the hell are we going to address our climate crisis if we're addressing 0.8% of the problem? We've had 15 years of this. 
And don't tell me that in 50 years, we can multiply it so that we can address 80% of the problem. I'm interested in scale. I'm interested in providing the right scalable finance to these countries, to these reinforced nations, so that they can do their work properly. And the third word that I haven't heard, except by Simon Mundy last night, last night at the uh, dinner, is climate justice. This is all about climate justice for the environment, for biodiversity, and for the people that are actually doing the work. The rainforests are the largest, the largest land acid, carbon asset that removes carbon. And nobody's paying for it. Some of you might be through this project and that project, but no one is paying for it at scale. And yet, six gigatons of carbon is removed every year for free in all these countries. The second one is biodiversity. I'm a bit tired of, say, of, of people saying that there's no biodiversity in carbon. There's biodiversity in carbon, including in the UNFCCC. It's called the Cancun Safeguards. If you don't know about it, I invite you to read it. It was signed in 2010, and all these countries have to respect the CBD, the Convention on Biodiversity. If they don't, guess what? They're not allowed to issue the carbon credit. Biodiversity is included, is completely discounted when you buy a carbon unit of sovereign carbon. And the third is obviously the people. All these people that are doing all this work for free for us. And so I invite you all to understand properly in a compliant way, what is carbon, in a scalable way, what is carbon, and in a, in a justice way, what is carbon. We've set up a new company that we're launching next year, and it's addressing this $4 trillion market. And so if you're interested in this, I invite you to contact me, and I hope that we can address the biggest existential crisis of our time. Thank you.